investigator with, who is uh, Gianni Angelini from Bristol and also the statistician from Bristol, the senior statistician that we have, Barney Reeves, who will have a comment. So uh, Gianni will give a trial update and uh, uh, Barney will uh, just comment on uh, the report that we'll have from uh, Professor Angelini. Thank you, Kyriakos. <clears throat> I'll give you a little bit of the background history. I'll start by saying that I'm not a believer like most of you are in this room, so I'm pretty neutral to all of this, which is a good thing when you're trying to prove whether something is any good or is better or worse. And my interest in this was um, the fact that when we look at various uh, systematic review meta-analysis and things like that, they all seem to suggest and there is something uh, in terms of benefit by the use of uh, mini CPB. Particularly the thing which seems to be a recurrent theme is uh, saving on blood transfusion. So having declared and I don't have any interest, I would like just to show you for the one who may not be uh, abreast with what we're trying to do, a little bit of what is the purpose of the study and then show you some of where we are at present. So the, the aim behind these studies, as I said, is to uh, compare conventional versus MIEC and to look whether uh, there is any effect, effectiveness and cost effective. And the objective are predominantly three. One is to look at primary endpoint, uh, which is a combination of endpoint. I'll go to that in a minute at, thir at 30 days. But we also got secondary endpoint and cost eff effectiveness. So we're trying to be as comprehensive as possible as you can be on a study of this nature. Now, the uh, research question or the population is that you can include anybody from 18 to 85. And we said you can have cabbage, you can have AVR, or you can have a combination of cabbage and AVR. Bearing in mind that not every center can use the MIEC system in these three different scenarios. And of course, there are the usual exclu exclusion criteria like emergency or congenital abnormality or platelets, et cetera, et cetera. But this is pretty bog standard. Now, perhaps the most important thing is the type of intervention, because when I first uh, approached the subject of MIEC, uh, I was rather confused because there was one, two, three, four, and so forth. So we reach an agreement based very much on uh, the technical paper produced by Kyriakos in perfusion that we had to concentrate on type two, three, and four because I un from what I understand, obviously type one is, is a pretty dangerous arrangement anyway. And also we established some criteria in terms of conventional cardiopulmonary bypass there are some conventional cardiopulmonary bypass using center which could not be part of our study, which effectively are already uh, like mini bypass. Now, these are the end point which we chose. Now, when you're trying to prove something, it's, it's all fairly well to talk of surrogate end point, but ultimately, I think if you want to change practice, you have to show some difference in the big end point. And of course, this makes your study much bigger and is always the main reason why then it becomes difficult to do it. But we went really for broke, so to speak. We wanted to have things which are pretty relevant, no more obviously than death is pretty relevant, having an MI, reintubation, tracheostomy, gut infarction, all of these things are validated by certain criteria. For example, MI, you have to have erased troponin and ECG changes, mechanical ventilation for more than 48 hours, stage three uh, acute kidney injuries. When people talk of K1, I mean K1 mean absolutely nothing actually. You really have to go for something serious. Stroke is another pretty drastic event, reoperation for bleeding, need for additional PCI, sternal wound infection with evidence of deescence, and septicemia, generalized septicemia, uh, with diagnose, microbiological diagnosis. And also, we obviously look at secondary endpoint, which are blood product and all the rest 
ITU stay, hospital stay, et cetera, et cetera. And also we're looking at quality of life at 90 days. This is the uh, virtually uh, the description, the sample size. As a result of all taking all this in consideration, we ended up with a pretty large number. This will be pro probably one of the biggest uh, study ever done uh, if we manage to finish in, in cardiac surgery. And then, of course, you, you, you divide the patient in the two groups, you randomize them in the two groups. All of this is done by the center who have enrolled automatically. We got an internet access where you enter the patient characteristics and then the, the, the machine will tell you what is the randomization. Now, we started, as always is the case, with very good intention. In fact, 20 centers said, yeah, we'll do it. In black are the centers who are at present recruiting. In uh, blue are the centers who we hope, and uh, we are quite confident they will start recruitment. Um, this is a pretty, I wouldn't say difficult process, but it's a bit of a lengthy process because you have to comply with rules and regulations which are related, obviously, to any uh, clinical trial. And uh, in red are the center who originally uh, said they would be part, but um, they are not any longer. So one of the questions is we are looking realistically here at about 15 centers, and we hope that we can increase the number of recruiting centers because uh, that's the only way to deliver it, really. Now, this is uh, what we've been doing so far. Now, whenever you do a, a large randomized study, you got a, a setting up period during which you will start with one or two centers, and then as things start to get easier in terms of the bureaucracy, you will recruit more centers, and eventually you will be able to deliver. Perhaps this is, from our point of view, the most important thing. This, this is about um, the first 100 patients, which was about in April of this year. So if you look from April to to, to then where we are down here, there is suddenly an increase. So we recruited in the last few months uh, about 350 patients. We, we now hit in the 500. This is a little bit uh, not update slide. So the curve is going up, but of course uh, you wanted to, or we wanted to go up uh, really like this. And our estimate is then probably we need to recruit about 100 patients per month, and at the moment we're hitting about 50 patients per month. Uh, it is a very, uh, perhaps slightly unrealistic study, and having heard from uh, the colleague from Germany, uh, then uh, we have an 8 million pound funded study, and 1,000 patients less than ours, they are behind shadow, um, it doesn't really entirely surprise me. Um, these are the center and the recruitment, but uh, the reason why I put up these slides is to um, raise another issue for the participating center, but also for the people who may come on board. The green are coronary patients. Most of the patients at the moment are green, are coronary cases, and I would say probably no more than 15% are a combination of valve and valve and graft. I think the results of this is that the events are not going to be very high. The problem is when your event is low, your sample size goes up a lot. Otherwise, you do a trial which show nada here or there. So the question here is, if you really want to see some benefit from this technology, I think really you have to concentrate more on the so-called high-risk patient, or at least the patient who need combined procedure or valve procedure, because in coronary patient, to get a Euro score high is, is nowadays almost impossible. And this is a summary, in fact, of the Euro score, as you can see, in uh, most of the, in, in the unit participating. And you can see what difference immediately, right? If you have uh, a combination of valve and graft or valve on its own, does to the Euroscore. 
as we've heard in the last few days, if you do a Lima to LED, whether you use a, a conventional Hartnell Lamb machine or, or a Hit Robinson, probably is not going to make any difference anyway. And this, again, just simply for the purpose of showing to you is the distribution of the surgeon who are taking part in the study. Some unit have only got one surgeon, some other have got uh, several, uh, like 12. So, and this is a report of, of the way we report the primary outcome. Uh, it's not really of much interest, just to show you what we are doing. And uh, this is the first report which we are producing, which we are making available to all the participating centers. And the idea is to repeat this probably on a quarterly basis. This is what we provide to the center who want to be part of it. We got a recognized clinical trial unit which is running all this trial. We can provide you with all the documents, our ethics, which will, be need, which will need to be translated in your own country, but in most of the cases, we can provide that ourselves. Uh, you will have to have a local ethical approval, but again, you, it can be mimicked on our ethical approval, or indeed the ethical approval of the center, uh, which have already been part of the trial. So if there are German center who want to participate in this, the information is already all there. Ashraf has done uh, all the work. We then review uh, all of these, and we oops, and we have a sort of formal formal agreement, which is part of the legislation. And when this is in place, we usually have uh, an initiation site. We do all of this by Skype, and then we will give you the go ahead. At that point, once you enter a patient into the system the machine will tell you what is the randomization and then, of course, it's up to you. And the most important things is the fill in the CRF because without the information, it doesn't matter how many patients you're going to randomize. So that's all I'm going to say. Uh, that is the email you can contact us. I think for the people who believe in this MIEC and you seem to be all pretty strong believer, this is the best chance you have to prove your point. Otherwise, and I'm sorry, very sad to say that, in the next five or 10 years, nobody will be talking about me any longer, I'm afraid. Thank you. Well, thank you, Barney, uh, Johnny. And uh, I would pass on to Barney to have his comments as the trialist, the senior trialist of the trial. Cannot, we cannot hear you, Barney. There is no voice. It's probably your okay, microphone. Okay, sorry. Yeah. Yeah. Yes. Can you hear me now? Yes. yes. I, I don't have a lot to add to that. Um, the two really key points are about the outcome frequency. Um, yes, sat in Bristol, it's very difficult to know what sites are doing. Um, but the graph that Gianni showed um, where most surgeons are recruiting uh, one or less than one patient per month um, is the one that I find most compelling or, or most interesting. Um, I really want to understand uh, why it's so low per surgeon, um, given what I think is the surgeon's workload. Uh, is that simply logistical constraints in the trial that it's just too difficult for you to do, you don't have the staff to do it, um, or is it because the surgeon is picking the patients to go into the study? Um, if the surgeon is picking the, the, the patients to go into the study, then uh, what Professor Angelini said about uh, high-risk patients, all comers, if we're going to answer the question about this technology, in all comers, we need a population in the trial that is all comers, high risk, low risk. Um, if it's about the constraints, the logistical constraints, then we need to have different conversations about what would make it easier for you in sites to do the trial. That, that's kind of really all I have to say. Okay, <laughs> thank, you. thank you so far. 
Uh, now let's have a, a sort of discussion <coughs> from uh, at first from the participating centres, and I can see it's uh, Andreas Lippel, uh, who is uh, mainly responsible for this, uh, you know, uh, steep slope that we had lately uh, from Ulm. So, Professor Lippel, ha what happened? And you have such a great activity. Hello, Kyrakos. Good morning to everybody. Uh, greetings from Ulm. Um, I would say two things uh, to the study. Uh, as you could see, we, we have uh, included many patients so far. Uh, actually, at the moment, my colleagues are operating on number 123. Um, as you've seen, uh, we have included so far only coronary patients. Um, the reason for that is that I am very convinced of uh, doing good things uh, with the MIAC system or with the MIAC principle in coronary patients. But as I told you sometimes before, um, I'm rather uh, cautious, um, not so convinced in using a mini system in complex in valve surgery. The reason for that is I don't know whether it is a good idea to handle the um, um, blood coming from the pulmonary veins, the vent suction blood. Um, even if we, if we use a, a, a composite system and we are going um, the procedure, restarting procedure with a closed system and most of the time we have an open system because we need to, to cover all the amount of uh, blood um, which is sucked from the, from the left ventricle or from the left atrium. I, I don't think this is a very good idea. So I am not a very good, a strong believer in the benefits of MIAC in open heart procedures. But uh, nevertheless, I will, uh, I, I'm very uh, curious what, this, what the study will bring, but um, I'm, I'm, I'm afraid to say that in, in our uh, institution, we, we will, uh, go ahead of including only coronary patients. But, uh, uh, and uh, I must say it's a little bit opposite to that what uh, Gianni said, uh, we try to include every patient. Uh, we don't have any selection criteria. Uh, uh, so we recruit patients on a daily basis as long as they are not um, included in other studies. Um, and that makes the number rather, rather big and in the moment and on the other hand, if you go for uh, simple valve procedures, like simple aortic valve procedures, they're almost uh, gone in our okay. institution. They are now going uh, for TAVIs. Yeah? So uh, of course, high risk, middle, uh, medium risk patients are going for TAVIs, but nowadays all, also the, the low risk patients receive TAVIs. And uh, the few cases, uh, leftovers, let's say, they are all they are all training cases, and I think I don't think it's a good idea to start uh, with a um, complex uh, MIAC uh, procedure in a in a young guy, in a young surgeon who is starting his career, and so that that are the reasons we we stay with coronary cases so far. No, we, we're very grateful because you are recruiting really very well, and as you say you're not really selecting the patient. So within the context of coronary surgery, this is real life. Yeah. And thank you very much again, yes. So Andreas, I'll bring back the question. Will you reveal us which is the secret for having such a great activity? Is it uh, the head of the department that is pushing? Is it the research incentive from uh, your uh, colleagues? Is it the any company that is sponsoring or uh, uh, let's say uh, uh, wanted uh, something to be done or otherwise, can you give an advice to the other, for example, German centers, uh, uh, yeah. why we cannot have, uh, not that uh, good activity, but the, anyway, a, an average input for this trial? Well, there's no real secret. Uh, as you said, I'm, I'm the chief of the apartment and of course, um, uh, department. Um, of course, I, I'm pushing it a lot. And uh, as you said, we have six surgeons now included in the, in the yeah. comics trial, so that everybody who is, uh, uh, let's say, a well-trained surgeon is now familiar with, with the MIAC system and uh, there's, no, there's no exception. And uh, of course, I try to advertise a uh, comic study in, on a national base. We have our meetings. Uh, uh, for instance, we had last week uh, the meeting of the German 
a cardio anesthesiologist and I had a presentation there and, and made uh, some advertising and I do everything I can do to, to promote the study. Uh, but I'm also a little bit skeptic uh, if we if we will be able to recruit a 3,500 patient in, in the next uh, two years. Well, maybe not two, but uh, what we aim for uh, three to four years, to be honest, this will be the realistic uh, goal. Uh, I think if we can recruit another four or five centers and the existing center make a little bit more of an effort like you do, yeah. Yes, then we can do it. If it takes another year, it doesn't matter. I think we have very big centers in, in Germany, and as yeah. long as we have at least one of them, like uh, Berlin Heart Center or Bad Oeynhausen, they express their interest already. Uh, I think we have to work a little bit more on them, and uh, we have one. We, we, we are center. indeed, and we appreciate your effort as well in this yeah. direction. Uh, yes, Professor Choi, yeah. Maybe can quickly comment on that. We wanted to we want to participate in the trial, and we requested, or we talked to the ethics committee, and because we need local ethics approval, and the ethics committee did not approve it because it's gently expressed underpaid. So we cannot run any trials where the effort in terms of staff is not recompensated, and that's just a major drawback why we couldn't participate. Uh, well, we discussed thoroughly about that. Uh, uh, it it in is interesting that an ethic committee express an opinion on finance. I've never heard that before, but... It's, well, it's also unethical in their opinion to do something that's not paid for, because no, no. somehow you're, you're redirecting money from, from the healthcare provider into research, and there must be a strict separation between research and um, patient care. Why do you redirect money from the healthcare provider? Do you apply clinically the MIEX systems? No, the, the question is the time effort that you have to put in to fill out the CRFs, you either do it just voluntarily after work and then it's just your personal joy, or you do it doing work and your salary is being paid from the healthcare providers. Yes, but if you want to have research, this is part of your job. It's not uh, uh, the healthcare resource that you are utilizing, it's uh, for for someone who is doing research, academia, or whatever, uh, you know, I don't believe that he's spending re resources of uh, healthcare just uh, doing something that is probably beneficial for the healthcare uh, ultimately at the end of it. Uh, I don't know if I'm right or wrong, but uh, just do not forget that uh, all this trial is self-funded. That means no one from us got any money, and uh, to be honest, it's very difficult as uh, I will pass on to uh, Ashraf, for, for a surgeon to collect everything, do the CRFs, and not just the, you know, the consent, but uh, also to do the surgery, persuade the team to be allied with him in the anesthesiology perfusionist, and then collect the CRF, write down, and uh, give the reporting. So I would say, okay, fine, up to a point, I can realize that uh, for a system might be uh, let's say uh, something that is not normal, especially in Germany, where everything is is paid. From what you told me, for a statin, you got a f eight million uh, fund, and uh, I'm surprised for a system like this that uh, we think we think that we might change the way that cardiac surgery is operated. Is uh, I don't know. Is, is something that uh, it can't be in my mind uh, uh, as a rationale. But anyway, let's let's uh, ask yeah, uh, Ashraf. May I have a comment? Yes, please. Uh, may I make a comment. I, I just wanted to support what uh, that what uh, Young Choi said. Uh, but I think there is a uh, big difference, at least in Germany, whether you're working in a university-based hospital or in a community hospital, for instance, or in a private hospital. Uh, as long as you work in a university hospital, it's, it's right what you said that uh, people are. Uh, supposed to um, work in part uh, for scientific uh, reasons and that, that's why it's much easier uh, to, to commit them uh, to do such kind of work uh, even if it's not extra paid but I can ensure you that the extra amount of uh, work you have to do for comics follow-up is, is very little uh, these are doing our uh, our fellows during their uh, duties at night so they, they're, they're already in, in the department and uh, they're doing this, this uh, by the way. Uh, I mean, you, you're just nailing on the head. You're using the, you're using the 
conventional cardiopulmonary bypass, so MEAC, all the extra work is to randomize a patient and half yeah. an hour or 40 minutes to fill at a CRF. I mean, if this is a lot of work, how, how much money do you put on this? Thousand pounds? I don't know. <laughs> well, for the start cabbage trial, the per case reimbursement is 1,400 euros. Yeah, yeah, but And I mean, we're doing only a 30-day 30, 30 follow-up. So this is quite comparable to this, and we did the calculation. It was 1,200 euros, including 500 for the patient insurance. Our ethics committee demanded the patient insurance for each case. It's a randomized trial. It is all approved. All the devices are approved. They have CE mark, but still it's a trial. It's randomized. We need its extra patient insurance for that, and that's why it didn't carry out. Ashraf. Well, it, it certainly helps if you're chief of staff. Um, um, that's sure big, big, uh, the bigger <laughs> difference that f between a university hospital and a community hospital. I don't think that it's so difficult to do it in a community hospital. But the pro problem is you don't have the staff that are eager to do it. So it uh, ends up in a one-man show or a two-man show uh, after your uh, duties. And uh, filling up, uh, doing the follow-up isn't very difficult, but filling up the CRF in 40 minutes if it's on your spare time, um, that's um, quite challenging. And I, I think the problem with other German centers is if you don't have such dedicated uh, people like in Ulm or uh, in Braunschweig, it will be very difficult in other German centers if you don't get the money to do it. Okay, so uh, there is a relevant situation in Switzerland. However, uh, you never raised any issue about uh, funding. So. Uh, I want to question Hans Jörg, since, since uh, you are with us. Uh, Thierry couldn't make it. He's, he's in the States, as you know. So uh, I believe that uh, your activity can be definitely much, much bigger. And uh, we, ca we counted a lot from the first beginning to, to Thierry and uh, yourself about having big numbers. So there is a question, can we increase the workload of uh, your I input? Of course, you know. I'm, I'm you know, what I have to do is to, to, to refuse to pay the, these patients, you know. We have a study uh, nurse, you know, she's really connecting all the data and she discussed with, with the surgeons, for example, for, uh, for valves. So uh, cabbage, I think we can make more, you know. I, I have no idea why we do not make more because we have a lot of cabbages. This is, this is <laughs> why you <laughs> have no idea as well because you are doing some thousands of cases and yeah. uh, you have 40 cases so far in one year and a half. I mean, no. you can have Unfortunately, uh, my chief is not here, he's in the U.S. So yes, I yes, I'm just <laughs> taking advantage of your presence. That's why I, I question yeah. you, so... <laughs> That, yes, to be honest, I have no influence on that because uh, we, we, ha have. we have we have cabbages. Yeah, you know that we have a lot of cabbages, 300 years. So why they are not more included? Please ask that to Jerry. Or, well, you are uh, the chief perfusionist, isn't it? Yes. So, uh, so I perfuse everything I can. You know. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Okay. So, we, have, we have to twist the arm of the head of the service. Yeah. All right, so let's, let's go to the America then, uh, because uh, Cyril Serik is the vice president of the society, and uh, we keep waiting for the Americans to join. So it's f first of all, Canadians will probably lead, but I cannot see the America coming in, and then they will say to us, it's a European study. So what should we do then? Cyril? <laughs> we need to make America great again. <laughs> <laughs> do it <laughs> yeah I, I mean that's uh, that's a million dollar question I mean I I, I, I don't know I, I think uh, we really have to find a few champions I mean Bob Kiai now is in uh, states. in the states Excellent. and that might be the that might be an avenue to go is to uh, so if he hears a Sacramento will come in then yeah all right well, Sacramento you can include it, Johnny. Okay. Sacramento. Yeah. What about what about Toronto? Well, we were. Yeah, we're, we're almost we're there. Al we're almost there. We just need the uh, the Skype interview, and then we're recruiting. So. All right. Well, as as we discussed in the board, I think we need to have some, let's say, closer collaboration with the AMSECT because these guys they they are willing, but for some reason they are either reluctant or they don't know exactly how and uh, uh, you know the exactly what we're doing. So, for example, Rob Baker wanted to participate from Australia, and uh, some other guys, uh, 
uh, from the states that I do know and you know, and probably you may mediate. Yeah. Well, I think one thing maybe uh, is the actual training, maybe, the, and that, that might be why uh, some of the American sites, I mean, they might be interested in uh, MIET, but, uh, you know, don't know how to go about doing the training. So maybe as the society, we could commit to uh, helping these sites actually get trained. So whether that uh, be going to, to burn or, or some of us actually going uh, to their site and helping train their uh, staff, I mean, that's one thing with, that we could easily do is to uh, you know, use our expertise and, and help them uh, get started up. Cause, uh, I mean, because well, you gotta, the whole thing is, you gotta start, they gotta start from scratch, right? If you're getting anybody from the US, you're gonna be starting from scratch. So it's a lot harder to start from the scratch and go through this than it is to, uh, you know, be doing it and then be involved in the study. But uh, uh, the way that uh, Hans Jörg uh, put it in is that uh, even if we train perfusionists, he said, I'm just a perfusionist, the surgeon would decide to ask Thierry. So even if we train the American perfusionists, would it be enough for the centers to, to join? I mean, do you think it's just a matter of technique here? Well, I think, I, think you still have to, I think you still have to, <coughs> you still have to have the will as a team, right? So you still have to have the will of the team. But if, if, if the perfusionists, if, the, if that part of the team, the perfusion team feels that, you know, how are we going to train on this that, and we can just make sure that that's not a barrier to them joining uh, the study. Yes. No, I just want to say what, what we are doing more is education. So we can make whilst my, my job is then to, to educate all the people that were able to be able to perfuse valves. So that's my job, you know, and my job is not to collect the patients, you know. But, uh, you know, I, I kind of have an influence, but uh, now the, I think the, the, the criteria for valves, I, I'm not really sure which kind of patients we will involve into the study because often if you ask we have an isolated valve tomorrow, they say, no, it's not qualified for the study. I didn't see the, the including no, criteria, no. but, but yeah, often they, that they is the answer. They all qualify unless mm -hmm. they are emergency or, or they got some uh, blood uh, dysfunction, otherwise they all qualify. Okay, so that's uh, perhaps an intern problem or a communication problem because often I ask, tomorrow we have an isolated valve and they say, no, that's not qualified for. We have to have to clarify There's that. No exclusion once. criteria, mm -hmm. actually, is all comers. If you exclude some comorbidities like uh, blood disturbance or uh, you know, emergency case, all the rest can be included. And there's no exclusion criteria for this. But anyway, well, let's go to Asia then, or half Asia, because uh, Sirdar uh, uh, you know, unifies Europe and Asia. It's just uh, uh, you in Ankara, and uh, we do believe, uh, Johnny explored a lot, uh, you know, far Asia, to see if there's uh, anyone else, China, Hong Kong, uh, 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 Japan, to join. However, you know people, for example, Saudi Arabia initially had some cases. I don't know no, if no, they, they keep... No, they rejoined. Now. Rejoined, they okay, fine. With the machine. I mean, with the delivery of the disposable, but they restart very, very well, actually. Okay, good. So, Sedar is the guy who can... You know, I also contacted some places around Middle East. I'm waiting their response because they, they also have some problems in acquiring those uh, minimally invasive uh, setup. So, uh, they will respond very soon, I believe. Okay. Mm. And then I will uh, give uh, uh, this, uh, uh, the microphone to Vadim Popov, who is here with us. And uh, I know that Russia is an emerging country to this technology, and all of them are willing, not just Russia, but all the neighborhood countries uh, to join. So what, what is going on? Can we have you on board, for example? Yes, it's possible. It's possible, Kyriakos, but uh, there are many challenges in Russia. The first of all is cost. cost. Because uh, uh, if if you implement this uh, cosmic trial, we start to expand the technology in Russia. It's the first point. And next, we to, to, to implement cosmic trial. So next to you is uh, the yeah, cost but, manager. But there is a free, free food center. <laughs> yes. Okay. Yeah, there are free food centers for, for this. And maybe, maybe we, uh, we can discuss about it in, in March, in, March yes. in, in Moscow. But uh, Benoit, what uh, he implied, and I heard it from other people from Russia, I, I spoke with the Bakulev guys, and they say to me that they have their own sets. 
and sometimes they can use a, a customized set. However, the oxygenator is not there. So would you help towards this, I mean, with a kind of, of a grant or something to, to these people in, in Russia and having, um, let's say, Medronic, uh, there's no other uh, uh, representative from, from the industry here. Provisionally, you said that you might help reducing the price or giving, you know, for example, oxygenators. Yes, it, it but that, that would facilitate a lot because I know this is the request from Tatiana, from Bakulev, when we discussed. And, uh, uh, it's more, yes, he's the chief perfusionist in Bakulev. So it's, it's a kind of, you know, managerial, I know, but uh, if you help, at least at these countries, we might have a lot of cases from, from them randomized. But, but, but the the, normally, the price of these uh, products in, in Russia is yeah. uh, 100 euro. 100 euro. It's, it's too difficult because. It's exactly, exactly. Uh, we, we are suffering. No, all, yeah. all, all companies are suffering by the price erosions. And uh, depending on the country, the, the price sometimes is extremely low. So the, the margins for the industry become uh, really worse. So uh, we have also to deal not only uh, hospital, but also to, to deal directly with government. And, uh, and when we are all very group, a very big uh, purchaser group, and uh, the pressure with those guys are extremely hard. So it means that we cannot continue in this way. So it's also a break to, uh, for the further R&D uh, and also with the DMDR regulation coming, it means that look uh, what we plan for the next four years, we will spend 40 million dollars just to make sure we can keep the current product on the market, just to make sure to, for you guys as a, a surgeon, you can continue to use the, the product. So it means that the R&D will be affected, uh, but also uh, the price erosion, it's really, really something that's become a limitations to, to continue to support uh, um, some very poor country. Yeah, that's, that's a bit the, the problem. We can do some effort for sure, and we are looking for uh, to uh, reduce as well the manufacturer cost. Um, recently, Matronic decided to produce his own oral fiber for the oxygenators. So it means that we will be able to reduce the cost and we will be able for the futures to keep um, a low price. So it gave okay. opportunity to all countries to access to high technology. This is the way we are working. Uh, and this is, I'm thinking, one of the only way we, we, we can do. Okay, so we'll keep your promise that we yeah, will yeah. examine the, this issue because yeah. that will be critical for... It's, it's not a problem of Metronic, it's a problem of Russian market. No, no, market. it's not a problem specific, of Metronic, yes, I didn't say. I don't. the Russian market, yes. Yes, Russian market. Uh, absolutely. Don't misunderstand what I said, is uh, that I, we would need probably help from the industry to, yeah. to start. Uh, well, just in addition, for example, when we, we have to deal uh, not with the, uh, the uh, purchase department from hospital, but governments or purchase groups, Keep in mind that uh, all of the time when we come with a new technology, you have to give free of charge the hardware. And at the same time, the guys are dropping the, the price to your price productions. So in this case, we have to decline. Okay, guys, yeah. we cannot continue yeah. in this way. Yes. And that's, that's really a, a, a big challenge for all industry. Yeah. Okay, so Marco, there's a lot of uh, activity in South Italy. You're leading, however, uh, 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 also Marco Di Usanio said that he might come, but I know that there is a problem with the ethics there and there is a kind of uh, you know, yeah. compliance issue. Uh, there's an insurance problem, for, for instance, we had to pay 10,000 uh, euro for um, starting. For application. Start. Yeah, for application, yeah, because uh, now the ethics went well, but then he said, okay, you're not covered by any insurance, so then we had to, to you know, give some money away, but, uh, but... I give not sure to whom, is it? Eh? <laughs> give some money away, give not, some money away not, not sure, sure to whom. In fact, <laughs> this, is, this, is, this is the problem. Now, uh, the, the only comments that I would like to say is, um, you know, a little bit preoccupied with the aortic valve, because uh, as in Germany, probably even up there, those guys they are not doing AVR anymore. 
So uh, it will probably be a commit trial, a study focused on uh, CABG. And uh, in fact, I'm very, very curious to know about what's the, the mean uh, Euro score of uh, CABG we are, we are doing, because obviously we should aim for really high risk CABG patient in order to, to finish the, the, the study. I mean, at the moment. I, I don't do, for example, combined procedures, sorry. Yeah. I, I'm not comfortable with, uh, with ABR and, and CABG, and I do little uh, isolated aortic valve nowadays in my, in, uh, in my unit. So uh, my, con my personal contribution would be around probably, I do uh, 100 uh, c isolated CABG, which I can randomize them all, that's not a problem. But again, I do very little isolated uh, uh, aortic valve, okay. and, uh, and I don't do, honestly, a combined procedure or aort complex aortic surgery with, uh, with, uh, with, with, with MIEC. So that's why I'm, I'm asking. I was cur curious about what's the, the mean Euro score of, uh, uh, you know, the CABG that we are. I don't know. I, uh, Barney, you probably can answer Barney, the question. Barney, can you answer the Otherwise, question? Otherwise, go back to the slides, but. Is it high I mean, risk or low risk? Probably it's low risk. From what I realized, from <laughs> we the can't user. hear you, Barney. Can you hear us, Barney? You, can you switch on the microphone? Then? We cannot. Your microphone is off, Barney. Hey. Yes. Okay. Okay. Um, I've just been looking at the picture, and it's about two percent. Wait, no, it's not. The median is about one percent. Yeah, as expected, it is low. That's why we have, uh, you know, low hard endpoints uh, yeah. percentage so far. So there may be a tendency not to recruit then high risk patients. Yeah, so we this cannot is a bias, say that. A selection we bias cannot, then. No, no, we cannot say that. Okay. What we Jamal. recommend is all comers, and definitely if we have combined procedures, then we, we will reach the numbers that they have predicted. But the thing is, uh, four or five centers are recruiting just. Uh, combined procedures and all the rest are just cabbage and that's why we're behind uh, the target. But anyway, we'll see how it goes. The, the critical issue is keep randomizing and uh, bring some other centers yeah. on board. This is... And then, as I said before, we, uh, I'm working in a network of centers. I may extend, for example, we have Cotignola Lugo, and they do loads of cases per, per year. They are the, the same group. So uh, I may just like engage them on behalf of the MIEC and good. see if they yeah. may. They, they Mark has been very good in helping in this. The bottom line is if we have another four or five center coming in and they deliver a reasonable amount, we can deliver the trial. But sorry to, for example, to keep after you, Jenny. You got 12 surgeons and you enter four patients a month. Is, is it no starter? I, I don't mean you. We, we have to talk to your boss. Yeah. All right. At least there is, a, uh, let's say, uh, a kind of promise from uh, major companies that they will examine our uh, uh, request for having... Uh, is the liver nova on? Uh, it's not on. Not on. But anyway, we discussed yes, uh, yesterday as a board with the, company, with the companies just before uh, opening the sessions and uh, uh, they uh, have got uh, our request and they say they will examine it for having a short of a funding like a subsidy a bit per patient, uh, all the centers that are recruiting. So that will be a kind of relief and uh, we already uh, have some you know, initiatives with, uh, with Gianni about uh, you know, promoting this stuff like uh, having uh, the protocol published and uh, doing some quarterly reports to the centers and maybe to the industry and so on. But uh, anyway, so far the message uh, is that uh, we are doing well with uh, 50 cases, but we need to double the, the load to 100 cases per month. So as we reach up to the target that in three, maybe four years, we'll have uh, finalized the, the trial. Otherwise, we will have, you know, problems. Now, before closing, I will give it to Polychronis to close uh, uh, as a co-moderator.